is at Center of Enlightenment. Sorry. That's okay. She is supportive and nurturing to those at Center of Enlightenment and it is a second generation minister here at Center of Enlightenment. Her mother went through the process with Reverend Ken. And then, um, as I said, she is the mother of seven and the grandmother of 11. And Gina and I have both, um, she lost her mother recently. Well, her mother transitioned as did mine. Um, so I would love if you could help me welcome a terrific mom, Reverend Gina Hampton. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. I'm so grateful to be here with you today. I can hear you, Gina. Um, oh. I'm not okay. muted. There, there you go. go. Start over. Better? I Hang got... on. Is that better? Yep. Awesome. All right. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, Good morning. morning. I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. Thank you for coming out. So um, yes, today's, today's a little difficult day. My mom just passed two months ago. So um, I'm um, remembering her today and hope I do her proud. So um, I, whenever I start my sermons, I start with history. I don't know why the teacher part of me, I guess, but something I always do. So I was remembering being in school and sometimes thinking history is pretty boring. And sometimes it is, but history is also very important in so many ways. So the first thing I do when preparing my sermon is I research the history. And then that's the first thing that goes on my paper. <clears throat> so while I'm talking about first things, this is the first time I have done a sermon for Mother's Day. And it's also my first Mother's Day without my mom. So my emotions are all over the place. I am so excited and I can't wait to get started. And of course, this happens and that happens. And I didn't even get started until this week. The ministers were like, Gina, are you ready? I don't know, not yet, but I will be. And this is also the first time I did a sermon and I didn't ask for a song. That's a lot of firsts for me. So first things first, I find the history for Mother's Day and I get it all on my paper, easy peasy, right? And then I just couldn't get back to it until Friday night. So I sat down and I started reading about the history and I realized, oh no, this is way too much. I'm bored. Oh no. It was it was too funny. I'm like, I got I gotta walk away. I I, I gotta I need to regroup. I, I just can't do this. So I call my aunt Pat and I tell her what happened, and we both just busted out laughing. Now, okay, time to get back to the drawing board. So let's get back to the history of Mother's Day, and I promise you that I'm not going to bore you. So the first mention of Mother's Day was celebrated in the Middle Ages. It was called Mothering Sunday. Mothering Sunday is a day honoring mother churches, the church where one is baptized and becomes a child of the church. So every year people would return to their mother church, such as Mother's Day. Now, fast forward to during the American Civil War. Anne Reeves Jarvis and Julia Ward Howe had been urging for the creation of Mother's Day for Peace, where mothers would ask that their husbands and their sons would no longer be killed in the wars. In 1870, Julia Ward Howe made her Mother's Day proclamation, which called upon all the mothers of all the nationalities, all the nations, all over the world, mothers reunite and promote peace together. Anne Jarvis, the Anna Jarvis, the daughter of Anne Reeves Jarvis, wanted to honor this and to set aside a day to honor all mothers because she believed a mother 
is the person who has done more for you in the whole world. The modern Mother's Day was first celebrated in 1907. Anna Jarvis held the first Mother's Day service of worship at Andrews Methodist Episcopal Church in Grafton, West Virginia. Andrews Methodist Church now holds the International Mother's Day Shrine. Her campaign to make Mother's Day a recognized holiday in the United States began in 1905, the year that her mother, Anne Reeves Jarvis, died. By 1911, the U.S. states observed the Mother's Day holiday, which is celebrated on the second Sunday of May. Mother's Day is not just about celebrating, it is also to honor and acknowledge anyone who is a mother. While I was doing my research, I realized Mother's Day could also be a sad day for people, so sad that they won't go to church or even leave their homes. While some of us are out celebrating, some of us, our hearts are breaking. I found this article on the internet and I think it will give us all something to think about. I did rewrite it to make it shorter, so I hope I didn't leave anyone out. Number one, to those who are a mother, including grandma, stepmom, moms-to-be, aunt, sister, friend, ministers, teachers, etc., and Men, I'm not leaving you out because some of you are both mom and dad. We celebrate you. Number two, to those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. Number three, to those who step parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. Number four, to those who live through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear those proud badges of food stains, we appreciate you. Number six, to those who will give empty nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and we rejoice with you. Number seven, to those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. Number eight, to those who have disappointment, heartache and distance with your children, we mourn with you. To those who have experienced loss through infertility, miscarriage, failed adoptions, placed a child for adoption, lost custody, abortion, or your child ran away, or the death of a child, we remember them and you on this day. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance, with your own mothers, we mourn with you. To those who have lost their mothers, we grieve with you. Wow, that's pretty powerful stuff. Can you relate to any of those? I know I can. I immediately said a little prayer for peace and I sent love and peaceful energy out to the universe. I think that's a great way to start my day from now on. I think my prayer for peace also helped me to get through the rest of my sermon. I love to share stories about myself and my family, but today it's gonna to be a little bit harder. So my mom and my dad had four children and I'm the oldest. Remember back in the day, mom was a stay at home mom. When I was little, mom would pull up a chair next to the stove so I could help her cook. As we grew older, in grade school, mom started working. I would walk my siblings to school and I would come home and I would help with dinner and chores. 
I would save my allowance. So whenever I bought her a gift for Mother's Day or her birthday, she always got her gift early. Sometimes I wouldn't even wrap it. I just was so excited to give it to her. I just couldn't wait. As I got a little older, my dad had asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. Well, of course, I said, I want to be a mom, right? I had a great mom. I want to be just like her. So in my teenage years, my parents got a divorce and my dad had received custody of the three girls and my mom received custody of my brother. This changed all of our lives forever. We went from weekend visits to bouncing back and forth from dad to mom's house. Mom, she changed for the worst and she wasn't a very good mom anymore. In my young adult life, my mom did something to me that was unforgivable. I was never going to forgive her. My father tried to tell me, you know, go talk to your mom. I wasn't going for it. It had been about a year or so. I still don't know what happened, but I know it was by the grace of God that her and I reconnected. And now I was pregnant with my first child and I needed my mom. So spirit works wonders. Mm -hmm. that maternal instinct right mm -hmm. so over the years she changed for the better and she became a better mom a minister and began teaching me about spiritualism I am now a second generation minister because of her it wasn't easy it took me a long time to get my trust back with my mom over the years my mom became a great mom, my best friend, and my biggest fan. This is the first time I've ever had talked about the bumps in the road that my mom and I had so many years ago. But spirit led me to talk about it because somebody needed to hear it. I hope I have inspired you and I have given you hope that things can change and that people can change for the better. You're not given a book that will give you all the answers when you become a mom. Parents are not perfect and we all make mistakes. I thank God every day for the loved ones I have in my life. And my mom, I had her as long as I did. She was my hero. In closing, I have one more first for you. So I called my Aunt Pat my other mother, and I had to read her my sermon. And she asked me, what kind of mom am I? I replied, you're a great mom. Well, at first I thought she was trying to trick me because she didn't have any children of her own, but she's like a mother figure to me. And so she replies, I'm a Craigslist mom and no one ever believes me. So as we're laughing, she's right. She placed an ad for a room to rent and Taylor, her daughter, answered the ad for her father. And then shortly after Taylor also moved in. Now they're one big happy family. Mm -hmm. See what spirit can do? Mm -hmm. Someone who doesn't have children, now she has them, you know? So I just wanna leave you with a little quote. Moms are like stars. You don't always see them, but you know they're always there. And my mom's flying high. Thank you for allowing me to serve everyone and have a very blessed Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. You're welcome.